Grimdark High Viz? Welcome back to the Lizard of Doom. I'm Max. I had one evening this week to film. One. And I wanted to get all of my Chaos Knight armor done. This the armor panels is what I'm after in this one evening this week, because that's all the time I've got. I didn't start filming till about 6 p.m. So that has cut it very short for this week. So speed painting is definitely my only option to keep this project moving. In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. With my priming nice and set up, ready for this kind of technique. If you haven't seen it, go watch my priming video. It's up in one of these corners. I am in a good position to get some color down. So help out this growing channel, hit that subscribe button, give us some little comments and, and likes down there. Let me know what your favorite speed ta tainting? Speed tainting? Let me know what your favorite speed painting technique is. And let's get into it. My prime job is doing wonders on these boys. I've got all the highs and lows in there already and I can go straight in with some contrast paint. I've got everything I might need here from a shaker to brushes to water to a wet palette. The paint I've mentioned in previous videos in this Chaos Knight Diorama series is this Magma Droth Flame Contrast Paint. It is so orange. Who will be my first victim? Maybe him? No, uh, how about the big boy? Yeah, go on then. Come here, big guns. I used this top plate as my tester as it was nice smooth surfaces. Easy to lay down paint. Although I'm a slow painter, I did try my best at a little bit of speed here, because this was a good test this one big night to see how long the rest of them would take. I hit my first roadblock on the very first piece. Contrast paint, if you let it dry and then go over it again, leaves horrible coffee stains where it overlaps. You can see the line very easily, so I had to develop a technique I call working with a wet edge. I would work on one side for a little bit, like this here, and then quickly run over to the other side when I noticed it was drying too much just to keep it moist. Moist. This really only affected this one piece. No other panel was this big, and it kind of eased out when I got to the front. There were nice little panel lines that I could paint up to, and then I could leave that there and get on with the other side. I am using this paint straight from the pot and not thinning. I do want the nice neon colour. Could do it in a couple of thin coats, but when you mix it with contrast medium, it starts to get a bit thick. Contrast medium is see-through, but it's still a layer of paint, and I don't want that building up on these lovely nighty boys. All in all, this night took me around 30 to 40 minutes to do. Extrapolating out, that means it would take me an hour and a half to two hours to get the big nights done, plus the small nights on top of that, the little war dogs, which would turn out to be harder. You can see I've got the nice gradient of the undercoat still left in this. This is what I was aiming for when I did that zenithal slap choppy weird method. Again, watch the video on the channel in the playlist. With the first night looking oranger than orange itself and the gradients still nice and tight in there, we can now move on to the rest of the horde. When I say horde, it's like there's seven guys. I was wrong when I calculated time. It took me like four hours and I started at 6 p.m. It was 10 p.m. when I finished this bit. This was my second little bump in the road. The war dog's finicky little top plates with chains and lumps everywhere were an absolute ball ache compared to the nice smooth panels off the big nights. But I ground on and I didn't move until I was finished. I sat there for four hours doing this. This isn't for the faint hearted, but I had no other chance to get this done. I needed to do this for this video and just to move on with the project so I don't get burnt out just thinking about these nights all the time. It was a necessity, so I did it. I knuckled down and I sat there until it was done. Now's probably a good time, well, past Maxwell's going over this stuff. Uh, to explain the lore behind my guys. You may wonder, why the bright orange? Why grimdark high viz? Two words that don't seem to go together. Or is it four words? Is grimdark two words and high viz two words? Two phrases that don't seem to go together. My guys are not your typical fallen imperial nobles or possessed demon engines. They're a bunch of scrappers that got lucky. They call themselves the vultures, hence the bird heads, the vulture heads. They once raided what they thought was a normal Imperial bunker. Turns out, there's big old machine boys in there. 
So after the first one melted his brain plugging into the cerebral cortex steering wheel, or whatever it's called, law nerds, let me know. They tried again and again until it took. A couple of dead people later and they'd figured out the secrets. Turns out being a strong-willed nobleman is imperial propaganda. Anyone can plug themselves in and you just might fry your brain. Small chance, but worth the risk? Maybe. They now use these machines to harvest scrap across the galaxy. Big old meaty machines carving up everything. That's why I've got so many chainsaws to cut through all of the tanks, all of the bits of buildings, everything they want to drag off to their evil scrapyard lair. The Chaos Gods, seeing this, thought this was amusing, so started to put bets on them. Each knight in this army has a different mark, a different god. And some are Chaos Undivided, some have none because they haven't earned any yet. It's a game to the Chaos Gods. They find it funny the carnage these idiots in mega JCBs are causing across the galaxy. And here we are with this colour scheme. High Viz, Grim Dark, Grim Viz, High Dark, High Dark, Grim Viz, Orange and White. The grind on this orange was indeed long, but I didn't let it beat me. Side note, colour of this water, kind of tasty, kind of deadly. I didn't have a sip, but uh, give me a tenner and I will. The next speed painting step is sponging. The colours I'm using for this are Troll Slayer Orange and Luganath. That says Luganath. I don't know what Luganath is, but this is the colour of a Luganath. And I did plan on using some Pro Acryl Silvers to get the metallic showing through, but I decided to save that for the next time because I am speed painting and this layer also needs to go on other areas, so I might as well do that all at the same time. I then honed my tools, by tools I mean spare bit of packaging, into a shape I found appealing for this kind of work, a thin edge with a large handle to keep control. I dipped a little bit on my wet palette. Wet palette not necessary. I just was worried that I wouldn't get this done tonight so I could save the paint if I needed to. I dip, dip, dip on here, making sure I get that nice little straight edge on the end of the sponge there. And a dab, dab, dab on here. At this point, I really thought I'd fucked up. But I pressed on like a moron. I just kept going. Every model seems to enter an ugly stage. A stage where you're not sure if you should turn back now or keep going on but have faith in the process, my friend, and you will find the beauty in your models. Sometimes this big tip here wasn't doing it for me, so I had to switch for a thinner, skinnier model to get in between all the little pieces, like these big metal spikes. With a smaller bit like this, you could fit in all the nooks and crannies. On the smaller war dogs later, I did end up using a tiny little bit of sponge with my lady-shaped tweezers to get in the really, really small areas. This is what it looks like, this step finished. Like I say, I was doubting myself here. Have I just messed up my entire project for the week? Have I messed up the entire project in general? And I just kept going. Too late now, keep going. I then gingerly applied the Luganath orange. Still don't know if I'm saying that right. And then I ended up going a little bit bonkers with it. I liked how this was starting to look now. I thought I'd taken a turn in the right direction this time. I covered a lot of the middle of the area that I'd put the previous orange on to kind of create that heightening of color and a really worn effect in the middle. Like this was heavy machinery that had been used and bashed about. The sponging of the orange was another lengthy process. This took about an hour and a half. So now I'm five and a half hours in. 11.30 PM on a school night. I was trying to be quite careful here. Any bits of the metal I did end up hitting cause there were a few of them are going to be where the weathering is going. I've got a nice bird degree plan for the brass and that's gonna cover up any little speckles I've got in the wrong places. I toiled and toiled and toiled until my posture was worse than a bent over question mark. I've been sat in this chair for five and a half hours now. Maybe if I was just doing one night, this would be speed painting, but I'm doing a whole army, like the main color on a whole army. With everything nice and kind of chipped, weathered, I don't know what you call this, I don't want to call it weathering, I'm going to do a whole weathering video on these guys in the near future, maybe two or three from now, the next one is probably going to be the fine details. The je ne sais quoi of these models. Am I using that right? I don't know what it means. 
Me neither. How do you spell it? J. J. I typed that wrong. (laughs) 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 You. (laughs) Indefinable elusive quality. Especially in pleasing one. She has a certain je ne sais quoi. (laughs) The je ne sais quoi of these models. I was becoming more and more happy with these models as they started to exit their ugly teenage years. And I'm trying to do a voice over here. I can say that, it's my channel. Did you not have ugly teenagers? I know I did. Believe it or not, but this is better. This is better. I've been shouting quite a lot and I'm quite close to the microphone. Sorry. I was nervous about what was to come though and how much I should do is less more when it comes to hazard stripes. But with high vis on the brain, I decided to go for quite a bloody lot, to be honest. The weathering looked nice and the challenge was to match the light areas of the orange with light areas of white without being able to see them. I ordered artists masking tape, that's very hard to say, from Amazon and it came in four different sizes. Daddy bear, mummy bear, baby bear and fetus bear. I didn't use a daddy or fetus so this size comparison that I filmed and am now voicing over is a bit useless. I used the two middle ones, mummy and baby. The shoulder pad complete, I decided on a thickness. Nope, not fetus. I can't can say fetus! You can't say. Call me bear, daddy bear, baby bear, fetus bear. You can't say. It sounds ridiculous. I can say. You're going to think you lost your mind. I have. I have lost my mind. Fetus bear. Uh, yes, I said fetus bear. Can I, do you need to leave or can, <laughs> or, can, or can I keep recording? No, not fetus bear, not baby bear, but mummy bear. That seemed to be the right size to me for the hazard stripes on a shoulder pad. I affixed a stripe at a random angle that I thought might be all right. And then I ripped the rest off and proceeded to stick it to the palm of my hand. This was for one purpose only, not because I'd lost my mind and it was getting very late at night, but to remove most of the stick from the underside and use it as a guide piece of tape. This would then be put against the previous bit of tape and used to measure out where the next piece of tape should go and keep the angle consistent and the same. After the next piece of tape had been applied, I would remove the guide strip, move it up, and then keep going in this fashion. Some bits were a bit finicky, like around these metal spikes and other bits on the rest of the army, but I powered on and we got through it. And with that, it was time to possibly ruin the model I just started liking again. I used Citadel Wraithbone as the base for these high-vis stripes. I wanted an off-white colour and this offered a kind of warm option that wasn't a grey white to keep in the same kind of region as the warm orange itself so it didn't look too outlandish. Tiny bit of sponge with a nice flat edge so I could get in all the, the inconvenient areas. I was really hoping that this paint didn't just go underneath the masking tape. That would have been a real big issue. I used a paintbrush to neaten up the edges and make sure that I wasn't sponging over too much of the metal because I didn't want to have to cover it all in weathering effect at a later date. With that layer done, I moved on to the white. I used Sir Duncan's Two Thin Coats White Star. I got little dabs of that on an even smaller sponge and tried to line that up with the light orange that was now underneath the masking tape and layer of Wraithbone to keep the light effect all in one area on the panel. This kind of worked. Enough. Once that was all dry, it was time for the satisfying peelies. I was so scared that I'd be pulling paint off, but I did buy artists masking tape on purpose because I thought it would go easier on the paint than, you know, normal DIY masking tape. And I couldn't get it off my bloody finger. Lo and behold, the effect had worked. I was slightly amazed that I hadn't messed it up at all and started to really like this paint job. I'd moved from thinking I'd really, really messed it up with the first sponging of orange, to now knowing that this was how I wanted my whole army to look. Just look at that. Grimdark High Viz. Have a go yourself at home, it's easy. If I can do it tired and delirious, then you can do it too. 
I then spent the next hour masking off everything. It was getting very, very late by now. But luckily the sponging of the white is quite a fast process. That doesn't take too long at all compared to everything we've already done. There was a lot to mask off. This is why it took so long. I took this opportunity to give the war dogs a little bit of character by putting a different white marking on each of their faces and then went ham on the big boys. Big heavy machinery needs a lot of high vis. People need to see where you're swinging that chainsaw about so you don't accidentally chop something you shouldn't. I then spent a very long time sponging. It was two, maybe three in the morning by the time I'd finished this and I'd started to go bonkers. I was referring to myself in my head as Dr. La Sponge, Count Spongula and the Spongenator. I had way too much caffeine and I was on a roll. When Count Spongula had finished all of this, it was time for more satisfying peelies. Everything had worked out surprisingly well. I couldn't believe that I'd done well. I, I just thought I'd mess it up. There were a few bits that did need fixing. I just went in with a paintbrush with some Troll Slayer orange and stippled over the areas where some white or wraith bone had leaked under the masking tape and that seemed to fix it right up, no issues. The peeling stage was very satisfying and I was very happy with the markings I'd chosen to give my knights and they're going to go lovely with a few transfers on top. It's time to set them up for a lovely look at all these big construction birdie boys. If you've made it to this part in the video, you are a real one. Thank you for sticking with me. The last video, at time of recording, has about 3,500 views. There's someone in their second month of YouTube, bang in the middle of their second month. That's amazing. Thank you all so much. However, it's got zero comments. 3,500 people have watched that and it has zero comments. Please just chuck anything down there. Your favorite color. What size shoe you are. How many grapes do you reckon you could fit up your bum? Just something, give a little bit of engagement and help me grow this channel. I've been, like I say, I've been doing this a month and a half and I really wanna take this seriously and I'm trying to produce this lovely series as a good start to my career on YouTube. So anyway, let's have a look at them. Remember to subscribe, like this video, give me a little bit of engagement, please, and share this with your friends. I'll let this play out now with some cool music and I'll see you next time. Remember, it's not a pile of shame, it's a pile of future fun.